Hi, my name is Dr. Brian Curtis. I'm one of the paleontologists here at Fossil Crates. And today I have the distinct pleasure of talking a bit about Edmontosaurus and Ecdans. Edmontosaurus, the animal behind me, is one of the largest duckbill dinosaurs, definitely the largest discovered in North America. Uh, we have a skull that is uh, almost over four feet long. The duckbills were extraordinarily successful in the late Cretaceous. They live right up to the very end of the dinosaur. Definitely would have been prey for our friend Tyrannosaurus rex and other Tyrannosaurus like Displetosaurus, Gorgosaurus, Albertosaurus, major place to live up in northwestern United States at the late Cretaceous. These animals behind me relied primarily on their speed and their strength to run away from competitors. The uh, like duck here, appropriately, you can see very large legs. This one's drawn in on all fours, but these animals are actually quite capable of being bipedal. We have a term for it called facultative quadruped. It could get down on four legs, but most of the time it hung out on two legs, we would imagine. The anectans, the species of this one, refers to its tail. Its tail is extremely connected with ossified tendons. Uh, it was originally thought these duck-billed dinosaurs, who do indeed have a mouth that superficially resembles that of a duck, lived in the water a lot. But when you start looking at the skeleton, especially their tail, the tail doesn't suggest that it could swim very well because the tail had all those tendons kept it from moving side to side. Those tendons would have been very helpful though to keep it rigid and straight and allow it to run if it was being pursued by a predator. Uh, these animals um, have up to a thousand teeth in their mouth. That's kind of deceptive because these teeth are what's called a dental battery. And in the ultimate herbivores kit, you get one of these teeth. And this tooth actually has one, two, I'm counting three teeth in this one tooth chunk. And these teeth were columns and they slotted in up to six deep and they ran down either side of the top and bottom of the jaws. And they formed what's called a dental battery. And this dental battery meant there were no gaps for food to slip out. Also, it had some kind of chinks around it on either side of its jaws. Uh, not necessarily big chipmunk pouch chinks, but definitely something to keep the food from spilling out. So it had this huge beak, as you can see drawn there, called a rampica. And it would have allowed it to have snipped off plants and then pulled the plants into its mouth and went to work by moving its jaws up and down, side to side. Uh, there is debate in terms of the specific mechanics of how it chewed, but it chewed in the sense that it took very thick fibrous plants and ground it down. It's like taking two rasps or files and grinding against a tree stump. You will eventually obliterate even the toughest tree. And because it had so many teeth in its mouth and constantly replacing teeth, its mouth was always optimum, optimized to eat even the toughest of conifers, ginkgos, and cycads. Now, because we've found so many mummified uh, hadrosaurs over time, we know that it definitely did eat. There's, there's uh, some of the things it ate, that we find needles of the plants in the local area, and those cycads, ginkgos, these plants are very thick, fibrous plant matter. It wasn't eating soft plants. So the Edmontosaurus itself, this one is drawn, that little bump on its head, actually controversial because there are crested and crestless hadrosaurs. And the Edmontosaur is decidedly part of the crestless ones. However, a few years back, an exquisite find was made that preserved a ton of the, of the skin impressions. And right on top of the head is that thing which was found in a, in a way that suggests that this was some kind of cox comb, something that was a soft tissue comb. The crested hadrosaurs, think Parasaurolophus or Lambiosaurus, had these exquisite bony crests on the top of their head, which Edmontosaurus lacked. So it looks like even though it didn't have a bony structure for a crest, and I would still call this a crestless hadrosaur, there is definitely a lot more going on to its skin than what we originally thought. That's one of the great things about paleontology is a new find can completely shed light on something that we didn't even know to look for or knew could possibly exist. I hope you like this little vignette on Edmontosaurus. Please like, subscribe, leave any comments below, and we look forward to bringing you more information very soon. Thank you kindly. Adios.